Hi everyone, welcome to Monday night, Monday evening here. I don't know where you are in the world, but it's um, it's a rainy Monday night here in Brisbane. Um, welcome to Stay Calm with Lavender. It's it's one of those ones that we I was really excited to to talk about. And lavender is an oil that it's it's really underrated. It's really overlooked. And I think there's a number of reasons, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but it's, I think one of the reasons is that when we learn aromatherapy, we, we hear about the story about aroma, how aromatherapy came to be and how, um, you know, Rene Gadafoss was working in his lab and he burnt himself and he put his hand in a vat of lavender. And so we often hear about lavender oil and how it's, useful for everything it's the mother oil it's it's the oil that um when in doubt use lavender um so it, it, it and it is a very common oil to be able to access so it sometimes is tarnished with um that it's it's not special it's you know and and but it it truly is. It's an amazing oil. And we're going to talk all about that tonight. So my name is Sharon Wood, if you are new to these webinars, and I'm an aromatherapist here at Perfect Potion. Um, so if you've got any questions or any anything you'd like to ask, Deb's on chat, so you can pop um, anything up in, in chat. So that'd be lovely. Just even say hello or anything like that would be wonderful. Any questions? And questions that we don't get to tonight because we've only got a short time, we will um, be able to transfer it to our Facebook chat group. So if you're um, not a member yet, jump on our Perfect Potion community Facebook page and we can continue the conversation there and I can um, answer any questions and things like that. Um, so stay calm with lavender. So the focus tonight is really looking at that anxiety and how we deal with anxiety and how we can use essential oils and in particular um, lavender to help with anxiety. Now to, to start, it's really important that if you're feeling um, anything that, that, and your concern, you've got great, like some con serious concerns around the way you're feeling, please make sure you reach out. There are many services here in Australia that you can access, Beyond Blue, Lifeline, um, Black Dog. They're all um, online services that you can access and reach out to or phone. Um, but it's just important to not do it on your own. It's um, anxiety can be one of those beasts that can creep up on you. And so just make sure that you really are speaking to people and, and you know, reaching out. So I just wanted to share that with you. So first of all, I wanted to talk about, well, what is anxiety? Because we all get stressed. That, don't we? Like that's actually normal and apparently quite good for us to have a certain level of stress because it keeps us going and, you know, keeps the adrenaline happening. It keeps us focused. It keeps us, you know, on things. So there is an element of uh, a level of stress, if you like, that helps us to perform. But um, anxiety is really more when, when those um, normally when this stressor situation has passed, our anxiety goes down. Um, but if you have this continued anxiety or anxiety for no particular reason, then you're starting to look at, you know, this is more of a, um, a, con a condition, if you like, that you may want to address. So that's something to consider. Um, I want to talk about a couple of different types of anxiety. So now I will also say that I'm, I'm not a doctor, I'm an aromatherapist and I have worked as an aromatherapist for about 25 years now. And working with people with anxiety and stress is probably the most common um, condition that I, I support. So it's really important that you have a look at all the different types of anxiety. So you've got generalized anxiety disorder, disorder there's social anxiety, there's specific phobias that you can have and panic disorders. And sometimes there's um, conditions that you can have that have got anxiety um, present with it. So um, obsessive, um, yeah, obsessive compulsive disorder and 
um, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. So they're sort of different anxieties. And there's lots of treatments for anxiety on the market now. There's obviously, if you went to a GP or a naturopath or um, your health professional, there's different alternatives that you can use. So you could take herbs, you could take medication. But, uh, you know, really common looking, that a lot of people are looking more at meditation, at mindfulness, there's huge um, amount of studies done on the, the benefits of mindfulness and meditation around reducing anxiety. Um, and I can probably speak from, um, from personal experience. That has been a big thing. Uh, I have, like many people, have been a sufferer of anxiety. And I find that when I keep my practice of meditation in place, so when I do do a regular practice, it really does impact the way I, um, I look at things, the way I approach things and just my whole demeanor. Um, so that's a really um, something that you can consider as well. Um, so there's other strategies and I wanna talk about them before we quite just get into aromatherapy. Um, I'm just gonna digress. And I mentioned meditation and mindfulness. Um, breathing is another thing. So, you know, when you, I, I, I don't know if many of you have children, um, but if you do, and if they stomp their feet or they, you know, slam something on their hand, a common thing was for me was to tell them to breathe because they, they forget to breathe. They go into this anxiety, we go into this anxious state and we forget to breathe. We hold our breath, you know. <gasps> Um, so breathing is a really um, wonderful way to help as well. Just, just deep breathing. Breathing through your nose um, um, is better. There's a lot of research that shows that breathing through your nose actually increases your immune system. So, oh, excuse me, just breathing through my nose. If you, um, if you want information about that, I have got access to the study and I can flick that to you. Um, I can put the, can, um, the link on the Facebook page if it's something you're interested in. Just give Deb a little, um, little yes if you're interested and I can make sure. But it's the study around meditation and how it um, improves by breathing through your nose, how it improves your immune system. So that's fairly fascinating to me. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Um, the other one is progressive re muscle relaxation. You know, have you ever been told to lay in bed and if you can't go to sleep, you count sheep? And the other option is to, to actually try and tense the different muscles in your, in your body and then relax. So you tense your feet and then you relax. And then your calves and then you relax. And then your thighs and you relax. And your buttocks and then you relax. And you go through your whole body, obviously a bit slower than that. And that is another way of reducing or calming. And again, it comes back to that mindfulness, doesn't it? It comes back to centering and thinking about what's going on. So that's something to really um, look at. There's also lots of different things that, um, and I got a lot of this information from the Beyond Blue website, by the way. There's so much on there. It's, um, it, it's, it can almost give you anxiety looking at their website because there's so much on there. That's a bit of um, irony in itself. But, you know, living in the present moment, keeping healthy and active, you know, all of those sorts of things, they really do um, help with, with your anxiety. Something that I really, um, and if you know anything, if you've, you know, watched me before and, and you know that I work with um, cycles. So any of the women in the group tonight, um, it, any of the men, I actually believe men cycle too, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother webinar um, and that we won't go into there. But um, as women, we have a cycle and I believe that um and, and so does research. So it shows that we peak and we have an area of, of where, where um, we're a little bit, little bit more chilled. We're a little bit more calm. You know, the, there's a lot of estrogen in our body. It's a, it's a lot more happy. We're a lot more chilled. It's a, it's a great time of the month. And then as the estrogen and progesterone drops in our body, um, it, it's a time where self-doubt can come in. And, you know, that's, again, where that anxiety can come in. So if you're 
sitting here tonight and thinking, you know, I feel anxious sometimes, but not all the time. Um, maybe start to chart your cycle. Um, and there's just keeping a note of it is what I mean. So in your diary, just diarising, you know, feeling good today, feeling confident today, oh, a bit anxious today. It would be interesting to do that and then reflect after a few months. Um, are there similar days each month that you do that? And the gift of that would be then, well, if you know that that days are coming up and you know that that is a time where you're feeling more anxious, you could make sure that you're getting an aromatherapy massage. You could make sure that you've got access to, you know, a bath and you could sit yourself in a nice soothing bath. You could support yourself more. You know, you could seek professional help. You know, it's it's one of those things. So it's very powerful, but don't get me started. That's a whole other thing, as I said. Um, I think um, another thing, and, and this may be a little more controversial, but I, I but I wanted to mention it and, and with anxiety and that's alcohol. Um, a lot of us, would turn to alcohol because they think that that is lessening our anxiety. It's helping us. It's making us calm. It's making us feel great. But there's actually a lot of research that shows that actually alcohol increases our anxiety. So if you were to, um, and especially again, sorry, the, the cycle link, but if you are in that premenstrual phase of your cycle, it can heighten even more. So um, it's really interesting to be aware of your alcohol con um, intake, especially around times where you're feeling anxious, when you would, you know, your first go-to is to go for a drink and that will take the edge off. But um, you'll find that if you actually abstained and gave yourself a bit of a break, you might find that in the long term, um, your anxiety reduces, which is what I definitely found. So how does anxiety show up for you? You know, and, and that's a really interesting thing and a really important thing as a therapist. You know, if you were to come and see me in the clinic, um, I would absolutely be asking this question. How does anxiety show up for you? Um, it, do you, you know, do you feel tired for no good reason? Are you, you know, you're always exhausted? Um, do you feel nervous about the future? Um, or is it maybe more of a feeling of hopelessness? So these are the sorts of things that I would be thinking about and looking at it, you know, worthiness, you know, your self-worth, your self-talk, you know, or is it more, um, you know, anger? Is it more fear? Um, you know, trepidation of what's going on, you know, it's, that's really important. And I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit when we talk about oils, because we want, lavender is this mother um, essential oil that, that soothes and calms and nurtures us um, so beautifully, and can really help us with anxiety. And if you match it, you know, with, you know, we talk about synergy in essential oils. So we talk when we're blending, we talk about synergy. You might want to take an oil and then really go, okay, but I'm feeling fear with it. So I need to use essential oils that are going to calm me down and relax me and deepen my breathing. So, you know, lavender. But I, I'm fearful about the future. I'm scared about what's going on. So you'd be using oils that help you with self-confidence and strength. And they're the wood oils. So they're your oils like cedarwood and sandalwood, you know, those really, you know, strong oils. If you're feeling um, damaged, you know, frazzled, you know, unraveled by it, again, lavender is so beautiful and nurturing and mothering and just this massive hug and combine it with an oil like frankincense or myrrh you know which are healing in their properties which are you know repairing in their nature both emotionally and physically then then that's what I would be combining to help with that sort of anxiety if you're angry you know, anger can come out in all sorts of different things. It, you know, brings out, you know, fear can bring, anxiety can bring it out. And if there's that anger in it, then you're wanting to cool. You're wanting to calm. So, again, lavender would be your base. Well, not base oil. 
use a massage oil, but um, lavender would be your core essential oil. But maybe you'd go blue tansy or blue chamomile, German chamomile, um, something cooling, something calming, you know, something that would, you know, soothe the soul. So that sort of thing. So this is really important. So I hope that, that that's that's why when I ask you about anxiety, how it shows up for you, I'd love you to really think about that. And if you're treating somebody, make sure you do ask that. Make sure you ask how, how does it show up for you because um, that would really change what you would combine your lavender with. You would still use lavender, absolutely. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, generally I wouldn't go without it but you, you want to use it. Remembering though, the good old, um, you know, the, a memory association and things like that. So why, why aromatherapy is so effective with a um, condition like anxiety? Why is it? Why is it that when I'm, when I'm treating my clinic that 50% of my clients, probably more, um, would come to me with some sort of level of anxiety or stress. So, and why do they find aromatherapy to be so successful and to be so soothing? And I think it's a combination. It's a combination of um, essential oils work so well with the limbic system. So, you know, essential oil smell is linked so intrinsically with our emotions. And it's like when you smell the ocean, you know, or you smell the smell of, of baking, you know, baking cookies, you know, you just, ah, oh, you, you've got an instant memory association, an instant, you know, um, positive feeling. And there's a lot of research, again, that shows that um, that memory association is and, and fragrances are linked strongly and, and that they, the, it can the smell of a fragrance can reduce anxiety. So that's why I think aromatherapy is um, one reason as to why it's so popular. The second reason is if you're, if you're doing it in a, a clinic, like you're coming to see an aromatherapist, it's massage. There is, there is just something really special about an aromatherapy massage. It's soothing, it's gentle, it's enveloping. Um, you know, the technique itself is is slow and rhythmic and um, you just you feel like you're in a cocoon so it's um, it, the the entire treatment has a special you know sort of relaxing feeling about it so I think that's another reason why aromatherapy is so strong and just before I move on the memory association thing I just wanted to mention that I'm talking about lavender tonight but I want you to make sure that you before you use lavender before you race out and and you use it you smell it you know you smell it how do you how does it make you feel you know sit and think about it like you know connect don't just use an oil because i'm sitting here telling you to use it um i would love to have that that power over everyone but i would um actually really love you to use oils that that you feel a connection with you know that that you can feel that deep deepening that relaxation that calming um, and some essential oils will do that and some essential oils you know may not have that so you know if you don't have that connection with lavender then try something else try sweet marjoram you know that may be it you know try cedar wood you know that there's plenty of oils that you can use but lavender is the most common um, essential oil used I think around stress and anxiety and it's because it is just so good at it so so why so which lavender for a start so again um, if you've got the complete guide to aromatherapy it's a wonderful reference um, for all these sorts of things so um, always have it nearby but you want to make sure you're using the right lavender so you want to use the botanical name of Laven lavendula angustifolia or lavendula officinalis you you want to sort of avoid um, spike lavender so Spike lavender is another essential oil that you can get. It's lavendula spica, um, and there's another botanical name for it. Um, lavendula, where am I? I can't. 
latifolia. Um, so it's it it has um, a higher 1.8 cineol um, content. So it's a more camphoraceous soil. So it it's really good. Um, more so for muscle aches and pains it's a bit more stimulating actually as a lavender so you do want to make sure that you're not using the spike lavender that you're using the true lavender if you like so um and generally lavender and um, lavandula and gustafolia is the, the the most common oil that you'll you'll sort of get around also be very careful that you are buying pure essential oils. I don't need to say this, I'm sure to many of you, I'm sure you all uh, know the importance of using pure essential oils, but just remember that essential oils like lavender um, being so popular can be manufactured, adulterated, you know, that sort of thing. So make sure that you are buying from a, you know, a reputable source and you know that when you buy from Perfect Potion that all our essential oils have been tested and you can buy your um, little bottle of uh, lavender oil and on the side is a batch number um, and you can look that up on our website and you can actually see the profile of the oil on the website. So it's, an, it's a fabulous thing. And again, if you're interested, I can um, flick you a link um, on the Facebook group and I'll show you how to do that for your essential oils. You can only do it for perfect potion oils and you can only do it for pure essential oils. But if you're interested, um, I'll do a post on that in the next couple of weeks. Just flick Deb at, um, uh, whether you're interested and I'll do a little bit of a, an information video for you. Um, so back to lavender. So why? Why lavender? So, you know, there's, it's been used so, so much. Oh my goodness, it's 622. Um, <laughs> I was worried that I didn't know what to fill and I haven't even started. Um, lavender just can help melt away the, the feelings is, is what Suzanne fisher Rizzi says. So she says here that it instantly melts away that nagging thoughts and stresses that that feel anxious and and tense you know and I love that I think that's a beautiful way of describing it and I think it's fairly accurate too I I, I would probably use a scent um, of lavender probably most commonly when it comes to anxiety and stress I would use it um, it would be in almost every one of my blends because I, do, I you know find it so just so powerful it, it it really is that beautiful mother oil. Um, it's, it's really good at just working to calm the agitation that you can feel. It's that soothing, calming sort of way. Now, if you looked at lavender um, essential oil from a therapeutic um, angle, so it's analgesic, so it relieves pain and reducing pain. It's antidepressant, it's uplifting and counteracts melancholy. It, it's anti-inflammatory, alleviates inflammation. It's hypertensive, so it's low blood, it helps lower, lower blood pressure. It's nervine, so strengthening and tonifying the nerves and the, of the, and the nervous system. And it's sedative, so reducing that um, nervousness, distress and agitation. So if you're looking at it from a therapeutic way, and this is, you know, looking at the chemical constituent, chemical constituents of the oil and the actions, the therapeutic actions that they have, you can see here why so obviously this oil would be so beautiful for something like anxiety. So now I wanted to talk a little about what you can blend it with for certain things, because I think this is really powerful. So to promote um, emotional stability and to, um, to I, I use this one, this blend all the time for that busy head syndrome. So can you not get to bed because you're just anxious because you're thinking about things all the time? So lavender and Roman chamomile, just um, amazing. Helps with nervous tension, restless, uh, restlessness, anxiety, busy head, that busy head sort of thing. Now, you may not have Roman chamomile and lavender at home, but you might have some of our blends. So you might have happy and calm. That's a really good one. Harmony, water, um, or sacred journey. So in the sacred um, space kit, I, I would say if you had this kit, you would um, cover all your bases when it comes to anxiety. 
every blend is so oh, calming and relaxing. I, there's, there's every blend, no matter what I pick up, I feel like it's taking me to a place of calm and relaxing. Um, but it's, it's, it's sort of the lavender itself has really well documented on the um, reduction of anxiety and stress. So, you know, a clinical trial with aroma, um, of aromatherapy with lavender and geranium found aromatherapy effective for reducing anxiety and degree, decreasing um, heart and respiratory rates. So that's really amazing. So using lavender with, you know, geranium can help really calm that down. What about um, another study was um, aromatherapy, uh, lavender and sweet orange. A beautiful blend for anxiety. And again, some of the essential oils you can get from is sacred dreaming, relax, walk in the forest. My lovely Demeter one from our M Goddess range happy and calm and soul comfort. So they're all oils that you can use. Now, why is sweet orange so good with lavender? It's that blend that you can mix with. It's beautiful for children. It's beautiful for calming and relaxing those, those nerves. It's got a freshness about it, but a lightness. And it's a fantastic one to use at night. So it's a great oil if you're wanting to sort of calm yourself and get to some sleep. So and using... Um, where are we? So we've got, what about when lavender, I mean, when anxiety is disrupting your sleep? So you're wanting to really get some sleep and you can look at oils like um, lavender and Atlas Cedarwood to help with that tension as well. And again, there's a range of essential oils, sacred temple, sacred journey, sacred dreaming. So, you know, tick, 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 listen to the rain and water. You can also just really use essential oils in combination with your rituals like meditation, putting a blend on when you're calming. And sometimes that's a really good option when you're new, new to meditation is just taking that breathing and relaxation time. And if you feel like your mind wanders off a fair bit, Using an essential oil can help you because it can help you focus. You can focus on the smell. You can focus on how it makes you feel and just really comes back to your breathing. So using essential oils like that is a really wonderful way of doing it. Obviously, you can use inhalation, bath and massage to help with anxiety. Now, we are so close to... To, to, we've got a couple of minutes. So will we open it up to chat? So we're going to open it up to chat. If anyone has any questions or any comments, um, you know, if there's anything that you need. Um, fabulous. Oh, so this is a, a slightly different question. We're talking about um, base products. Um, how do you make it? So that's, that's good because you're using your essential oils daily which is a fabulous way so in a body wash um and in a you know like a base product do, we don't do um shower gel base anymore do we no we we don't i'm sorry um but we do do base oil so you could use um you, what i would suggest that you use is making up your massage oil and after you've showered while you're still a little damp Using it as a body oil is just a beautiful way to go. You know, um, we do have a relaxed body wash, though, that I know you're asking to make it up yourself, but if you wanted to do that, you could yeah, you could do, um, you could use our relax range. There's a gorgeous range there. Um, oh, okay. So thank you. There's another question about um, the safety of lavender oil around pets. There's a lot of controversy around this. Um, and there's some good blogs that we've got a blog up on um, and we'll pop that on our Facebook page for you or um, if, you, if that suits as well. Personally, the big thing to remember is dilution around this. So if you're, if, if you're in a confined area it's, and you're using um, high dilutions of oil, um, then maybe, maybe you could have an impact but if you're diffusing a couple of drops of essential oil in a, a well-ventilated room, um, you know, it is perfectly safe. Um, the big thing to remember is 
just keeping it well ventilated. It's that's, and I have the same sort of theory for um, babies as well. Like this temptation um, to use more um, to get the desired effect. I'm more, less is more. And if you're using a minimum amount of a few drops, it's very, it is very safe with your pets. Um, I have had puppies and dogs and birds um, all my life and um, and I have used essential oils safely um, for sure. So there's a lot of things, but again, I'll get you that blog. Um, so I think that's it for questions. And it's also half past six, which is perfect timing. Yeah. Yep. So if you have any other questions, please um, feel free to, to send them through. I really hope that uh, you got something out of tonight and I hope that you can use lavender moving forward to help you with any sort of anxiety and stress that you may feel. So have a great night and I really look forward to seeing you in the next, next webinar. Thanks everyone. Bye.